Here's a check on stories we're following for you today on Robin Hood Radio. Our forecast calls for it. Some showers this morning, then sunny, a high near 30. Clear tonight, cold, low around 7. And tomorrow, sunny with a high near 32. We'll get Pat Pagano's tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments. Stories that we're following for you today in New York State. Legislation will take aim at workplace sexual harassment. New York lawmakers pushing for more protection for those who speak out against workplace sexual harassment. Nearly six months after former Governor Andrew Cuomo's collapse under sexual misconduct allegations from multiple women, a legislative package comprising of seven bills passed the Senate this week, addressing everything from the statute of limitations for complaints to establishing a confidential hotline for victims of workplace harassment. The bills would continue to bolster New York sexual harassment laws, which were reinforced in 2019 to protect more workers from workplace discrimination, including independent contractors, vendors, and consultants, and make all employees aware of an employer's sexual harassment policies and required trainings. Well, Lee Zeldin has now the Republican designation for running for governor in New York on the Republican ticket to take on possibly Governor Hochul in November. Handily winning out over opponents, clinching that Republican designation. Now, Zeldin's represented New York City's first congressional district on Long Island since 2014 and had been the favorite since last summer when GOP leaders gathered in Albany to vote for their favorite candidate to take on then-Governor Andrew Cuomo or any other Democratic challenger at the time. Zeldin won their closed-door straw poll with 85 percent of the vote, which was weighted to favor Republican-leaning counties. Well, two people unnamed, are facing felony animal cruelty charges for allegedly abandoning 15 cats in late January in Berkshire County. Two Western Massachusetts residents have been charged with felony animal cruelty in the Berkshires. The charges announced during a press conference yesterday morning at the Berkshire Humane Society were the result of a joint investigation between the Law Enforcement Department of Massachusetts Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and officers from the Lanesboro and State Police Departments. The case involved abandonment of 15 cats in two locations in advance of a winter storm in late January. Ten cats were left on a remote roadside in Richmond on January 28th. The next day, five more cats were left in Lanesboro. Four of those cats died. The Berkshire Humane Society offered $1,000 in reward to anybody who could provide information that led to the arrest and conviction of anybody responsible. The cats were brought to Berkshire Humane Society for medical attention and recuperation. They'll soon be ready for adoption, according to the executive director of the organization. In a story from TricornerNews.com, the Connecticut Office of Health Strategy has begun a new investigation to Sharon Hospital's parent company, Nuvance. The early investigation was started in October. The new investigation was launched on February 2nd and cites, quote, discrepancies between the conditions described on the April 19th, 21 settlement agreement and Sharon Hospital State and actions, as well as comments from members of the community, end quote, that to Tina Hyde, manager of external affairs for OHS, in response to a query from the Lakeville Journal. Dr. Michael Parkel has said that New Vance has not been honest about its efforts to work and communicate with doctors. Quoting here, they've not been willing to talk with the medical staff. They've never invited the medical staff to discuss a way forward, end quote. Meanwhile, Dr. Kurish added, I hate to see it all destroyed because of dollars. He leans towards a return to a community ownership of the hospital. If it's true that Sharon is losing about $5 million a year, he said it might be possible to raise that money through local donors. The Kent Memorial Library offering a free Zoom workshop enrolling in Medicare. That'll be Tuesday, March 22nd from 6 to 8 p.m. You'll learn about eligibility and how and when to enroll, when you can make changes, and the insurance options available to you to review and compare what services are covered and covered under Medicare Parts A, B, C, and D, and detail the costs associated. More information, kentmemoriallibrary.org. Former Deputy Jillian Hanlon announced her candidacy for the Dutchess County Sheriff on Monday in a story from TricornerNews.com. She has a wealth of experience behind her. The position was long held by the late Butch Anderson, who died in office October 5th. Hanlon's a retired deputy with 24 years working at the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office. Up until 2015, she was known as T.J. Hanlon. That was the year Hanlon, who was transgender, transitioned to becoming a woman, but she doesn't want that to be the focus of her campaign. She wants to focused to be on the number of more than 37 years in public service she has spent in various positions. The Millerton Village Board has voted to sell the historic Old Village Hall. It's finally going to go up to sale 
Bids are wanted from TricornerNews.com. The board is hoping for the highest bidder as it drafts a request for proposals to take the 19th century Old Village Hall on the auction block, so to speak. The building sits in Millerton's Main Street Historic District, which was approved in 2010. The building also has state and federal historic designations. According to Mayor Jen Nijak, the board decided at its meeting on February 22nd, held a day late due to the President's Day holiday, to finally sell the currently closed Village Hall at 21 Duchess Avenue in Millerton. Dutchess County Executive Mark Molinaro has approved more than $624,000 in funding for rent and utility relief available through a COVID-19 emergency rent and utility relief program for low and moderate income households. That program, previously announced in April of 2021, was placed on pause while New York State continued to accept applications under the emergency rent relief program. Since the Dutchess County allocation under the ERAP program has seemingly been exhausted. The county is now partnering with Hudson River Housing to reopen the rent relief program. Funding is under the rent relief program for Dutchess County residents who do not live in the city of Poughkeepsie since the city of Poughkeepsie receives its own community development block grant funds. So meetings coming up in our area today in Salisbury at 10 o'clock this morning, the Pope Land Design Committee. And then at 6 o'clock tonight, a couple of meetings. Initial budgets will be received from the Board of Education and Board of Selectmen. And the Salisbury Affordable Housing Commission is holding a special meeting. Also in Ancrum, the Planning Board is meeting tonight at 7 p.m. And in Sheffield, the Select Board has a working meeting on the second floor meeting room. That happens today at 2 p.m. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgans at the Interlake and interlakeandin.com. They're on Facebook and Instagram. You'll find a tapas menu and specials every night, interlakeandin.com and Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com. Dow Jones Industrial Average will open up today at 33,891.35, the NASDAQ at 13,752.02, and the S&P 500 at 4386.54. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.